Um, thank you to everyone who has um, put forth the tireless effort uh, for this fantastic week. I'm just um, so excited to, to be here and let's say, uh, you know, wel welcome, welcome to Equity Week 2022. So we're, we're very excited. And I am absolutely honored to help kick off this event, which is, which is very close to, to my heart. As you know, I am, uh, I'm new here, but one of the things that drew me to Montgomery College was the priority that is put on equity and inclusion. I was told that the college places great emphasis on creating spaces that are diverse and building cultures that are rich in difference. I've experienced this firsthand, I'm really happy to say, just in this past month in which I've been warmly welcomed across the college and been told by many people how much their own experiences here at Montgomery College of inclusion have kept them here sometimes for decades. And that says a lot about the college. Investing in a culture of respect is essential to shared progress. Attending to the dignity of each person is even more profound as it empowers people to make their own changes. And that's what our mission is all about. Some of the strongest communities that I know in neighborhoods and industries and elsewhere are those that contribute bountifully to both of these areas, a culture of respect and a dignity of each person. They nurture, nurture individual development and they facilitate group bonds. In higher ed, these dynamics are fundamental to student success. We all thrive in environments where respect and dignity are paramount. That culture of care and compassion is essential. One of the people who I admire greatly is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and he once said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. As we all know, love is no small project and this heavy word cannot be thrown around lightly. Over the past several years, we have seen a growth in awareness around racism and inequity, but they have come at far too great a cost. Lives have been lost, lives that can never be replaced. Trust has been stretched, strained, and in some instances, broken. Broken in several sectors law enforcement and the judiciary, politics, and, and even within educational systems. Reconstituting trust is work to which we can all contribute. It will not happen overnight or even in a year or two, but it starts with events like this week, which allow us to pause and pay close attention to where we are and where we want to go and where we need to go. Part of that project will be healing. That's why the college is standing up a center for truth, racial healing, and transformation with generous support from the Meyer Foundation. The Association of American Colleges and Universities now hosts 55 of these centers, and Montgomery College is now among them. The work of the center will be to, and I quote, prepare the next generation of leaders and thinkers to break down racialized practices and to dismantle the belief in a hierarchy of human value. I am told that MC's TRHT team was recently trained in facilitating racial healing circles and will be working over the summer to advance the work they started this year. This will eventually include facilitating these circles among students, faculty, and staff. As you may know, the college is standing up an education center in East County and the TRHT will be located there. I want to emphasize the healing aspect of this work. Several great thinkers have observed that true healing is always accomplished with love. Scholar and feminist activist, Bell Hooks 
who passed away just last year, once wrote, rarely, if ever, are any of us healed in isolation. Healing is an act of communion. Of course, getting to love through healing requires some tough, honest conversations, which is why the word transformation is in the center's title. We all have to be willing to own our own parts in this society, in attitudes, in postures that reify racism, in ignorance about structural inequalities that are the direct product of generations of racism, and in the privilege that some of us enjoy as a result of so many historical realities. This can be a truly humbling process, which is where the healing comes in. It can also be empowering. That's where the idea of addressing racial healing in circles of people in communities comes in. We have the potential to grow personally and professionally in these experiences. We can also help heal each other from the injuries that racism has perpetuated on each of us. To build an anti-racist institution requires such internal transformation. I hope that the THRT Center will be a part of that process, as well as events like those of this week. But while we attend to our inner psyches, there is a component to equity that is equally important, and that is outcomes. Inclusive excellence demands that we create equitable outcomes, that we join practice and theory to build results. Inclusion cannot be an afterthought. It must be integral to our achievement goals for students. We are making progress. We are making so much progress. We also have much work left to do. The data on our scorecard shows that the fall to fall retention rates from 2020 to 2021 had a 29 percentage point difference between racial groups. We must continue to interrogate the why behind such disparities and create pathways forward that are steeped in student-centeredness and equity. Course pass rates in fall 2020 varied from a high of 83% to a low of 67% across racial groups. If academic achievement is not equitable, then we must continue to act. And I say continue because it's also, it's also very valuable and important that we uplift and highlight all the good work that has been accomplished thus far. And there has been so much good work here at Montgomery College. With that in mind, we need to own our processes and policies as a community, as a college, and as a larger society. When we gather at events like these, we understand more deeply how structures have disadvantaged people in specific racial groups, neighborhoods, and socioeconomic circumstances. Understanding that this is one way of unraveling these injustices, of getting to the root causes. But once we have, there is still work to be done. There must be a vision of equity that is linked to outcomes in the public imagination and reality. We cannot relitigate this narrative each time we need a policy change. It must be central to the discourse of the groups with whom we partner. So we must talk about inequitable outcomes as if they are omnipresent, physical structures, psychological spaces, emotional states, and economic, educational, and political frameworks which impede progress, which limit growth, which diminish communities. And we must narrate equitable outcomes with a promise that they genuinely embody. A strong economy, healthy and democratic processes, multiculturalism, and an opportunity that is equitably accessible to everyone with the determination to seize 
hold of it. Providing opportunities for family sustainable wages, social mobility, and engaged citizenry is essential. Not only will this strengthen our communities, it will make us more human. I very much look forward to working with all of you to enrich our common humanity and build an anti-racist institution that empowers everyone. Thank you all so much.